everyone. It's a beautiful Monday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolami Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello. 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 Hi, Mariam. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank What's God I am fine. Oh, God. You know what? I just feel like God is testing me. Mm -hmm. I've had a roller coaster of stuff happened to me this weekend wow. i've been gisting everyone my house help i sent her to the market and, and she came back drunk eh? Eh? <laughs> the new person or the, the dr dr how <laughs> like you get drunk like like drunk like for daylight yes like like falling on the floor drunk screaming and shouting drunk laughing and crying drunk Was she breaking up alcohol? oh yes I'm like, and this is a young girl, you know, in her early 20s. How? I don't know. I'm like, where did you go? I'm like, I hope it's not trauma because it didn't seem normal. I'm like, what sort of drink did you, know you she have? She can't stay in your house, right? Uh, she can't, of course, that, that one is that's done. I but mean, the, but the you know what is, I like about it? The next morning, I'm sure she figured out. She was so already bad. packed. Uh -huh. I was Shall like, are you ready? She said, yes, ma. I said, oh, yeah, thank uh -huh. you Fantastic. very much. You know, so, oh, yeah, thanks oh, for coming. Really Apparently, sad. she has a problem. Yeah, it's it's which I felt sad for her, but uh, right now, you see, I'm raising two kids. Yeah. Let me just face that. I, I can't have that right now. Yeah, I don't have I that. I agree with mm. you. <sighs> How do you get drunk with broad daylight? Who I does that? No. <laughs> Happy birthday! Yes, it was Tokwai's birthday. Let me. I'm decks are ready for you, so I won't vex on TV. Not you. There are your people that are next for them already, but don't worry. How are you doing? I'm very, very good. Um, last week was extremely, you know, I, I had time to think and come to my realization that, okay, really, this is what I want. This is my path. It, it, it might not seem very financially profitable, but For it now. is what I really, really yeah. enjoy doing. Which is what? Um, speaking. My, my, uh, speaking, you know. So yeah, what I do, on, like I feel very blessed. You know, I was writing my blessings and I'm like, I'm doing makeup I love. Mm -hmm. I'm on a show where I'm getting to speak I love. Like not, mm -hmm. not many people have that chance to do what they actually love. And Three ways. In mean. every form. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that space, I don't take it for granted. I'm very, very grateful. Um, but yesterday, you know, everybody will send you a shout out. Everybody is loving you. And I got a tweet from a lady. I couldn't even remember her. I, I, was, I went through her Instagram to zoom in the picture to get what her face looked like. And she said, um, the scholarship training I did in 2016 changed her life mm -hmm. and how she benefited from it. And I came back and I thought about it that really God told me to do that training to empower people. But along the line, I got tired of the fact that people were not grateful like i was it was a sacrifice for me it cost me time and money to train people for free and there was this attitude of they're entitled to it like right. i'm getting something off right. it and i wasn't so i stopped it but we're starting again so i'm i'm, I'm for my as a birthday giveaway i'm going to be training 20 people free in makeup um oh, that's 20. I see yes. on instagram you put 200. oh you know, it's it 20 it because I'm trying, to get, I'm trying to get a brand. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to two brands to actually give them a startup kit. Uh -huh. so, so that it's, it's not just we're training them, but they are getting a kit to we'll start, start their career business. with. And I'm hoping yeah. it works yeah. out. So. Yeah, and so we're, we're, we're proud of your yeah. efforts. I mean, we've yeah. met some of us here have seen you go. Yeah. You know, from just some lady that was sitting down in the reception I'm to this you. fire brand person. Yeah. I, I mean, hear about yeah. soccer so. all the time. Everybody says... I, th I like this new you. I've seen you grow. And you know, you keep saying, keep uh, going. is a fire brand. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's only people like me, like I, I can actually, I, I saw the transition. I saw, the, I saw how we started together yeah. and how she was hungry to get better. How she didn't care what was going on on her right or her left. I should just stay focused. Okay. So it's something that is really admirable about you. And I'm really proud that you've grown. And I, and I thank God that I know you as a girlfriend and well done and good <laughs> you job. Know, when Mariah said she was, um, when she resigned from the show, no, from, from the station, from the my, I said congratulations. And because I totally understand the journey she's about to start. Yeah. Like, it's going to, all of us will be watching and the next clap <laughs> will be, no, yes, yeah, like, I'm watching, I'm watching. Like, like, yeah, supporting. <laughs> but definitely, we're girl. pushing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I get, don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have known Top for a very long time. And one of the things that attracted me to her, we met as uh, young models back in the day. And as I- all tall and all this. Yes, we together. modeled together. But I, I always knew that she had this drive. She was ready to succeed. She, you, you could tell, even as young, as, as a were. young girl, mm. that she had this drive to be something. <laughs> and a life of impact is mm. really, really amazing yeah. because that's why we're here. I, you know, when people tell you that, 
the best is yet to come. Mm. In Tokwe Zone, you can, was, you can yeah. actually you can see, see that the best yeah. is yet to come. Thank you, well done. Happy yeah, birthday. Well done. Many more well years. Done, years. Well done. Joy, yeah. I know you love to travel and you will travel. You will travel. You will get you'll go to Shanghai. Yeah. You'll go to Malaysia. <laughs> you'll go to everywhere in the world. <laughs> Paris. You speak. Mm. Yeah. All expense yeah. paid and you impact lives across the world. All right? Happy birthday. Many more years. Hello, Bajino. Let us move over to our blonde. I'm doing great. I'm doing amazing. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you, darling. <laughs> so um, I decided to, because I noticed that my husband is, um, his love language is quality time. Mm. And when he comes home and I don't give him that time, it's mm. always a problem. But for a while I forgot. You know when you are busy sorting other people's relationships and mm. teaching them, you forget sometimes you forget your, your own. Mm. So he's been complaining. I just listened and I'm like, okay, okay. He said, anytime I come now, you are coaching this one, you are in a session, you are this one, you don't have time for me. And I'm like, but I'm here with you. Yeah. He said, but you are busy with your coaching. You are so I now said, okay, what will happen is, Weekends, there's no coaching for me, no Aww. coaching sessions every weekend. I need mm. to pay attention to my baby of life. <laughs> and that is what I did okay. this weekend. Well, I, no, and I not paid that no good attention to him. I, I, you know, my weekend started early. I was not on the show on yeah, Thursday yeah, and Friday, Friday. So I did all my coaching sessions. I did about eight coaching sessions wow. for years. Well and done. I said, weekend, no, Saturday, Sunday is for Oga. Fantastic. So, and, well I, and, and, I, and I reached my goal. Eh, we're happy for you. <laughs> Mm. Oh, she can't okay. tell anymore. Yeah. How's the baby? Baby's fine. I actually I I was shocked on Friday when my guys put up together this surprise um Yes, they captured the ex ah. but what happened was that I had told them I wanted to do a group picture because I like that picture with the entire team. Yeah. Okay. So I planned that. I called Akiande, please come on Friday. We're good. Opa told me he has spoken to him that we're good to go. So I just assumed that, okay, we're going to be a dis So I didn't, I, I mean, I initially I wasn't shocked when I saw the crowd. I'm thinking, okay, we are here together. But as I was seeing cameras, I wonder what they're flashing. But like, what exactly are you flashing? What's happening? going on? You nearly ran so back. I saw the ban, I'm like, oh, <laughs> goodness. Did you see that one? The video. You see, I was TV there. You captured that expression right, so well. Like, right. Ryan was like, what's going on? <laughs> Let's know where back. You know, and sure, sure. it was but beautiful thank you. to yeah, work. Wonderful person. Thank you to and, my And I must say that person. everybody, you know, I, I wasn't shocked. I wanted you to move on. I felt mm. like you're big and you need to do stuff. But hearing people saying stuff about mm. me, I'm like, what do you? Different people. Oh, really? Like, you might everybody. not know. You've Added so much value to people's lives while you're here, and Praise it's fantastic. <laughs> exactly. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the Yay. news. People stay with us. We'll be right back. We're going to start with Daily Sun. You should start with Daily Sun sometimes, you know? <laughs> nice, bright day. Okay, economic report 17 states in danger. Borunu Adamawa Taraba Ebonyi, but he also can't survive without federal allocation. Lagos, Ogun, Rivers, Kwara, Inugu, others rated economically stable, or viable actually. No peace in Nigeria until Igbo produced <coughs> presidencies in Wobudu. Picture here of ultra modern Bariga waterfront jetty terminal built to boost water transition in Lagos. I always see transportation actually, I always see this going up on Terminal Bridge. Well done to Governor Ambadi. I won't seek re election in 2023, says Ekwere Madu. NSITF Buhari dashes NLC Pope on Kokori. Presidency lists action plan to tackle insecurity. And EFCC, other African agencies seek return of stolen fronts from US and Europe. Okay, so 17 states are in danger. Yes, yeah, I have the sorry. story. Okay. And um, it's the economic confidential. Um, yeah, economic. The Economic Confidential, that's what's called at the weekend. They release the report. Um, it's an annual report, a viability report index for 2018, saying that 17 out of 36 states are insolvent, which means that they receive less than 10%. Their internally generated revenue is less than 10% of what they get from the federal government exactly. allocation. And without the federal government allocation, they will not be able to survive in the state. Exactly. And so they are saying that uh, they mentioned some states who are doing very well, yeah. like uh, the, the federal Wallace. capital territory. Lagos, Lagos uh, Edo, Inugu. and Kano. So, so I think all the other states, states should sit up. Yeah. But this is not new. Honestly, yeah, it isn't. Known, yeah. And we've always known. When you travel to other states, you'd understand that there's no commerce going mm. on there. There's, what's the trade? How are you nursing the mm. things going on there? Interesting. There but we cannot underemphasize the effect of insecurity in some of the northern states. But that's, no, remember that some of them, the yeah, some of them are 
um, food baskets, as we call them. Yeah, That's what like they do, the farming and yeah. the cattle hiding. Yeah. And now it's a lot of problems, bringing insecurity. Yeah, and a lot of people are not going to When you talk about, about food baskets, food that, is the, that, that, that might be what mm. they are known for. Mm. But how is the food basket contributed to their IGR? Thank that you. is the question. They, they, that, that was never it. Right. They were producing, right. but it wasn't but contributing. Then, yes. So what we need to mm. actually mm. do is, um, um, we, obviously all the states obviously need to look and see what they can do to use uh, their resources and get some of them off the all of these um, exclusive lists you, you such see, that they can be able to have access to their own resources yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, um, oh, yeah. we need to congratulate lagos though um you know i was i was jetty very, yeah the, we, we, the waterway project in four years like it or not and i know we still have bad roads in lagos but governor Ambody has done phenomenal in seeing landmark projects mm. the jetty the lagos theater the um um, airport road because I drove through the airport road. I was traveling to Benin, and I'm like, it's good this now. is four years. Mm, that's the federal area. government in four years, all, I, all it was largely excuses. <laughs> <laughs> like you could do stuff in four years. Yes, four if years you really want for, to. if you want yeah. to. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to take the whole the story. Yeah, yes, go so ahead, Mary. Mm -hmm. on his 79th birthday, mm -hmm. he spoke about um, the Igbo people and how peace will elude Nigeria if they are not made. If a president does not come from the, that region, from yeah. the southeast, he says that they are continually um, sort of sidelined. That there's so many injustices that's meted against the Igbos and those in the southeast, and that has to be attended to. And he talks about IPOB mm. and societies and organizations like that. And he says it really has to do with unemployment. You have graduates yeah. over 10 years, no jobs. no jobs. And so the government needs to look into unemployment. I don't remember, remember I don't is the you. governor of the former Anambra uh, yes. state. Okay, let's move on now to Vanguard. NSITF, Kokori Labor Tackle Presidency. <laughs> Kokori says I was appointed in 2017 now. <laughs> <laughs> they are just giving him stories back and forth. Anyway, Serap urges Ganduje to reject Kano Assembly Bill. Is our topic today, so we'll probably hold off on that. Okay. Uh, federal government will deal with Amcon and debtors, says um, Oshimbajo. Mm. Alleged fraud, no money lost, says CBN. In security, we are up to the task, this presidency. So this NSITF is pretty interesting because uh, according to the story I read, Kukori was insisting that he was hired as the chairman of the board. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, and, and after he was hired, um, the minister of labor, I think, Ngigi, took him out to dinner to congratulate him. Mm -hmm. There were several dinners just to encourage him. And then when the president came back from outside, from abroad, they said, oh, yes, you're appointed by the acting president. But now that the president is back, we we'll get him to sign off. The president, according to him, signed off on his inauguration mm -hmm. as chairman, yet nothing was done. According to him, there's a cabal mm -hmm. that has spent two, allegedly spent two billion naira to stop him from being inaugurated, that they're afraid of his own integrity, the, the kind of person he is. They feel that he's going to unravel a lot of um, okay. uh, things that they, there are a lot of hidden mm. uh, issues that they don't want to get out. But um, but unfortunately, I think they're they going to be inaugurating, a new, inaugurating mm -hmm. a new board chairman today. Okay. They're saying that federal government is not according, according to federal additional is not saying that he was actually appointed as the chairman of another institute. I think it's some kind of commerce institute. I'm not sure. I can't remember the name. Not the NSITF. So that controversy is going back and forth. And hopefully, Should unfortunately for him, Shah, today, a new yeah. chairman. There's another story that's caught our attention. Insecurity? Which one? I got Amcon. Amcon, go ahead. Yes. OK, so uh, the uh, vice president is saying, see, there are about 105 power players that are owing the federal government lots of money and they are going to be blacklisted, meaning that they would not be allowed to have to do business with the federal government anymore. Right. Mm. And that they are holding the whole of the nation, you know, at, um, in round, um, yes, holding us, you know, we, we, can't, we, we can't do anything because of all this money that, that over doing. 5 trillion oh. Naira is what yeah. we're looking for mm. right now. Amcon has been able to um, get about a trillion so far, but these okay. companies in aviation, so, in the power sector, oil and gas, Fem Additional quickly spoke concerning the presidency that the, despite the fact that there are many insecurity challenges within the country, he, he was enumerating all the operations that has been put in place by the presidency to um, secure the lives of Nigerians, the operation, Sharon Daji operation, um, Pofada, um, in different locations, like about six of them that are targeted at insecurity, that it, um, the presidency is on the matter and that we're, not, we're up to the task. Okay. That's just what he's speaking Let's of. Let's move on to the, the nation. Let's not act as if we didn't see this uh, <laughs> blue guys. Uh, was Man City. Yeah. 
They won. I'm not very good at football. Oh, so, but um, I heard that some group called Man City won yesterday. Congratulations, Congratulations to, Man City. to Man City. We love you. I, I, I heard City. you know this football. I heard about Liverpool over yeah, and over the yeah, weekend. Yeah. So we were but thinking they, they were going to win. No, 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 they didn't win. They didn't win. They're number two. They didn't win. So Man City beat Liverpool. Why they say that Man City beat Brighton? No, 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 no. So the way it was done was Man City. It's done. It was simultaneously. Okay. So it wasn't as if so whoever won by the highest margin was going to win. So it was run together. So people were expecting that whatever happens, let's see, let's see, let's see. And now I know why football is interested. Sorry, I'm just I'm an idiot when it comes to that. Sorry. Football is good with football. Let's take a few other stories in the nation. Business giants in trouble over five trillion income debts. We talked about that already. States' right to seek review of revenue sharing formula, says ex RMAFC boss. Kokori loses battle for NSITF board chair and presidency list government's anti crime measures. Okay, you're going to talk the. Yes, so a, a former chairman of the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission, uh, Mr. Shetima Abagana said that um, state governments have the right to demand a review of the revenue sharing formula, that though it's not a solution to increase the internally generated um, revenue in the states, but at least it takes away the lion's share from the federal government. You know, they usually have 52.68%, mm. then the states, the 36 states 20. share 26.72%, mm. and then the local right. government, the 774 local government now share the 20.60%. Mm. So if it's... If it's reduced mm. and if it's shared equally, then states will be able to have enough funds to do stuff in their state. I hope so, because I know that they're actually also looking forward to that review yeah. for the 30,000 naira minimum wage that we've been asked mm -hmm. to pay. Yeah. So hopefully they get more money from there. But that shouldn't make them comfortable and not <laughs> exactly. gener generate internally uh, in their uh, individual state. Moving now to the punch. Okay, FG flouts pension law remits low amounts to workers' accounts. Uh, panic has called members kill five in Lagos community. Mm -hmm. Defense minister ought to have been fired, says Amfara Emir's chair. Mm -hmm. And blackout looms as labor plans pass transmission shutdown. Let's talk about this major headline. Who has that story? I have the story. Yeah. So five years ago, the Pension Reform Act made it uh, 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 increased the um, contributory pension scheme. That's right. what they contribute from 15% to right. 18%. Exactly. And then they prevailed on the private institutions right. to carry out to their the own bid, mm. while the federal government has not increased its own. So it's still paying 15%. Okay. So what, we, what, what the initial one was, 15%, yeah. your, your company pays 7.5, 7, 7. 7. 7. you, you pay 7.5. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. Yeah. Now, they're saying that the 18% that was increased to, your company is supposed to pay 8%, it, mm -hmm. and the government, the, the, you, and then the, your, no, sorry, you so pay, you pay 8%, 8%, and the company pays 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. So the federal government hasn't paid that extra 3%, yeah. and that's Seems. what they're asking for. Yes, and aside from that, five years since yes, then. Yes, aside from that, the federal government is also owing taking money from that pension fund. So mm. what do we, mm. people remitting it, not remitting it and even borrowing from the yeah. fund. So what happens to people who have served and then the retire, there's no money. Broke. Government is broke, but we have life pension. Who told you the government is broke? The bro government Please, is broke. Bro we the government is taking yes. from people who and have worked Borrowing, 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 borrowing. Treasury bill is the order of the day, which is hum Nigerians funding government. <laughs> we are paying life pension, so we are paying paying life pension. Treasury bill. Please, I want to talk about the Zamfara issue, because Zamfara Emirates are speaking up against the Minister of Defense, who is a citizen of Zamfara states. And they said that the, the representative of the Emir of Anka, is the chairman of the Zamfara um, Council of Chiefs, was saying that you can't accuse the, the Emirs of Zamfara of being of funding banditry in the states. That if you have interest in protecting the citizens of Zamfara, Carry you should have relocated your head, head office. You should move to Zamfara, open, wake up every morning in Zamfara, and be able to handle the <laughs> challenges of Zamfara citizens one on one. And I think that other than this throwing around of accusations, so you have the um, minister would accuse emirs, and emirs will say, no, minister, you're not doing your job. Mm -hmm. Can we all understand that there are citizens in that that are dying on a daily basis, yes. and we focus our attention on them yes. rather than ego tripping? Mm -hmm. OK, daily trust. Moving on very quickly, multi-billionaire cattle colonies yet to take off. Mm -hmm. Picture here of Governor Ganduja. He's in the news for me. This governor is so <laughs> popular. popular. These last few weeks, eh, he's doing everything. <laughs> he's, do, 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 do. he's seriously trying. So now he has, um, there was an event to um, inaugurate the two, the, the two of the, I think it was yeah, new um, yeah. emirs. Yeah. Um, so here, there's, that's, a, that's a major headline here. And then Kukori oh, redeploy, we talked about that already. Let me take a story we have not taken at all. Construction of... Justice, Bokuchua Bok not indicted by DSS. And uh, there's no construction here. Mm -hmm. The cattle the, colonies. Yes. Oh, yeah, let's take that major headline. Okay, so 
In response to the clash between herders and farmers, the government had come up with a solution, which is to build cattle colonies in about seven states in the north and middle belt right. area. And well, since they have talked about it, nothing has happened. Right. Experts are afraid that you know the time that they are taking to put this into into implementation mm. would affect the whole essence of of this um, mm. idea in the mm. first place. Okay. Although it's really quite an expensive venture. Ah, it's, 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 it's costing the billion? federal government about 92, 92 billion. billion. It's costing mm. private. private institutions who want to be part of, uh, of it an additional 100 billion. <sighs> so it's a lot of money, but then it's a step in the right direction. Probably then we'll stop having all these killings and yeah, fighting. Yeah, but you know, there, there was an initial backlash when this yes, idea was proposed that, yes. initially. Why, why, why would they? Yes. yes. Why would the yes. government but, be So I think they're just trying to let us know now that they've not started though. Yes. They are still trying to work on how to put it together but when he started, well, we need a pilot um, uh, state yeah, to so see, working on see that, if it works first. Yeah, that's and plateau state. Yeah. So they're so doing some well. survey in Wase and Kenem local government for right now. Right, okay. But right. it's just still starting. Nothing all right. yet. That's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we have a few line of topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. Recently, Kano State House of Assembly passed into law the pensions rights of speaker hmm. and deputy speaker, hmm. which will enable the two presiding officers earn life pension after leaving the office. According to the report, the speaker and deputy speaker would also enjoy foreign medical trips, a brand new car every four years. Now, what are your general thoughts on this? Joining us on the show is a CEO, House of Justice, lawyer and civil rights activist, Gloria <coughs> Ballason. Welcome to the show, madam. Thank you. Good to Thank have you, you on. Thank you for having me. So you can call us on 070-8066-8014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag yourviewTVC so we can read your tweets. Okay, so we discussed this issue last year. I mean, actually, during the paper review, we just discussed it. Um, <coughs> but we'd like to hear people's views because we don't want to start a precedence that all the states are now, before you know it, all the House of Assemblies start bringing this option out for their lawmakers. In fact, we are recently, but I think, was it by also? Yeah. That tried to even do for the entire Everybody. member, <laughs> all the lawmakers, <laughs> including. Picture. And I'm thinking, so before this become a trend, mm. let's do everything to put the issue on the table and let's get people's views. Um, you're not our guest on this, but I'll just hear your thoughts on it generally. But before I come to you, let me hear the ladies' views and I'll come to you. Um, I know. You, everybody has a view on this. Let me come start with you, Bejuli. What are your jobs? Because I know you have, you have a slightly different perspective yes. to this. So um, I believe that um, pension is more, is something that, you know, is more to cater for people after they leave service so that they don't fall into penury. So you have, we have what we call the contributory uh, yes. pension scheme where you take a bit of your salary and then your employers take a bit of salary to make up your pension for you. Right. Now, the president and the deputy have life right. pensions, vice president, vice president yeah. have life pensions. Right. The governor and the deputy have, the House of Representatives they have. Yeah. So why are we stopping the state assembly Fantastic. from having life pensions? Because the thing is, the problem is not in the life pension. The problem is the fact that this, um, uh, they are civil servants like right. every other civil, right. though they are elected right. for a period of time. Right. But if we have to make our economy grow, mm -hmm. they shouldn't be put on life pension, okay. including the president. So you get into a position to lead people because you really want to serve. Now, one of the reasons people kill, maim, and make sure that they get into those positions is because of the pecks of office. Okay. I'm going to have a Let life. Let me come to you, Gloria. I mean, I wanted you to hear different views on this and your thoughts because you're also into this, in this, in this injustice um, in, in the industry. What are, what are your thoughts on when you heard this? Is this legal? Should even this be legal in the first place? Well, I, I listened to your paper review earlier on and you spoke about how 17 states are in penury. Mm -hmm. So if 17 states are in penury, then it's a contradiction in terms that we should even be talking about pensions and life pensions for speakers and deputy speakers. Um, you've also got to ask yourself the question, what is the criteria for coming up with that decision to say, oh, well, you're going to um, provide life pension for the speaker and deputy speaker. What have they done? Mm. What is the quantum of work? 
Uh, don't forget that um, in Nigeria, and, and this is not to validate what it is, when people go into political offices, most of them think that the pegs of powers are supposed to enrich them. Mm -hmm. So you now have a situation of double jeopardy against taxpayers who have paid taxes and these people get away with very huge salaries at the expense of so many people. Um, Again, you know that uh, for many states, they have not even been able to pay uh, the minimum wage. They haven't been able to pay salaries. You just spoke about the fact that not many states are able to even, you know, uh, do the basic things mm -hmm. that are required of them. All right, I, I, I hear you. But there's an argument, and I'll come to you, Tope or Jumar, that there's an argument that these lawmakers leave everything they have, their business, <coughs> their their entire livelihood, they abandon it for this next four years to focus on lawmaking. Now, when they do that, is it fair to after they leave? Because if, you, if for example, if you are uh, a business owner and you have nothing, you have, you have no revenue, you're not generating any revenue. So this, but this, um, this um, House of Assembly that you focus for next for four years, isn't it appropriate for you to at least get something? At least you know that they can, they can sustain you for a period. That's the rationale people are saying, and I wanted to just bring that to the table. Do you think it makes sense? For me, it doesn't make sense because, as Gloria said, first of all, we're talking about a country in penury. So you're coming because you're representing those people in penury. So you understand the state that everyone else is in. So when you come there, we're expecting that you'll be a bit, you know, Considerate. use your, your conscience a bit. How would this help us? What do we do to help our people first? If, you, you know, there's something we're not talking about, this particular law as well. There's also traveling abroad for health purposes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need to even ask yourself, how did we even get, get to this point where we're talking about the uh, speaker and the deputy speaker having life pensions. <laughs> How is it that we don't even understand that you cannot do service, public service, without sacrifice? Mm. And, and you see, we, sometimes the, the problem in this country is not even uh, the people who are there, it's how we have somehow institutionalized um, impunity. You cannot talk about saying that, oh, you left your colleagues, for instance, in the university, and you came here and you left it. What were you thinking when you decided that you were going to do public you service? To make you, enrich yourself. you wanted to enrich yourself, no, no. and you want that to be perpetual. And again, you cannot benefit at the expense of the majority. Mm -hmm. And so if you're coming to public service and the point is for you to serve, then you must also be able to even put down what you have so that we can have wealth distribution. Mm. But you know, again, Kano has been in the news for all of the wrong reasons Everything. since uh, <laughs> the election. You remember that the first time that there was an election in Kano State, we had the commissioner of police who was trending then as an example of everything that our police should be, CP Mohammed Wakil. Yes. And we had very good elections. Mm -hmm. And then the elections were canceled. Mm -hmm. Then you had another election that was marred by violence. And you said that Absolutely. elections should be the kind of elections that we should have. Fast forward a few weeks, and then we had the situation of uh, the governor also uh, decimating uh, the, the Emirates and making it five Emirates because he has uh, you know, a situation with, with, uh, with, with, the, with, with, with uh, the Emir, <laughs> Sanusi. Um, I think that we really need to look at the larger picture. I feel that every Nigerian should be on the pension scheme. Every Nigerian should have opportunity to contribute to their future. And the, the government future. should have a right mm. to contribute their own part. So it's yes. not like because okay, you've we'll said you have mm. life We'll continue this pension. conversation. We're not done yet. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll continue. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. All right, Gloria, let me come to you because um, on this table we've talked a lot about um, the involvement of people in governance, yeah. um, demanding justice. Because if you would think about this bill of this, the Kano Assembly, the, the audacity of it even being put forward in the first place, mm -hmm. the brazen nature of how you can even think that you can actually get away with this. That, that, that's, a bit, that, that, that's a bit of confidence that comes from the lawmaker. How did, you, how did we get to the point where 
that can happen. And in some states, I mean, thankfully, Bielsa was able to not ascend to it, which is great because a lot of, a lot of public <laughs> outcry. But Kano, I just have a feeling that yeah. Kano said, my just, this might fly. The governor assigned. Yeah, that according to well, this paper when I read this morning, Sarah was still appealing, appealing to him not to sign. Yes. Are you saying he signed this morning? Right. You have that you update? You the difference between Kano and... according to Sarah this morning, they were still appealing yeah. to him. Yeah. But appealing in your own well. thoughts, okay. yeah. where, how do we get to this point where it's almost as if these lawmakers they just, they feel they can get away with this? They are lawmakers. You know, the, when you speak about audacity, um, I, I think that people need to understand that the audacity is not just in Kano. Mm. I, I live in a state, Kaduna <coughs> state, where you have all forms of you know, impunity always staring you in the face. Even on the issue of the, the Emirates we're talking about, Kaduna State, and especially Southern Kaduna, has been worse though, because chiefdoms were converted to Emirates by a mm. governor. Now, the implication of that is that in a Christian and traditional religious dominated area, uh, the governor, through an executive fiat, converted that place so that you can have a situation where only a Muslim will superintend over uh, the, the larger uh, community there. And you know, when you do that, the whole idea is that you're dividing the people in a place that is already difficult to manage. Mm. But I didn't even hear Nigerians uh, you know, scream about this. And that's why I spoke about consensus on the issues that are wrong. Because except we are agreed on the issues, and we shift from this issue of relativism, they will not be able to address our problems. So back to Kano, where you know is the focus of this discussion. We need to understand that if it flies in Kano, it's going to also fly in Bayelsa. It's yeah. going to fly in a quiet bomb. It's going to go everywhere else. And even if the governor has signed it into law, it's up to uh, the people there, especially the lawyers, to go to court and challenge it. But again, you know, we have a situation with our judiciary that right now we are at a point where the, the judiciary, and I'm talking about it from the top to the bottom, seems to be intimidated. Mm. Mm. Right. If the chief justice can be pulled out, oh. then you who is down at that who ladder, it takes a lot of courage for you to, to even right. think yeah. right. that you can stick to the right. So you see, we, we need to be able to decide for ourselves. Do we really want to have a country? The most powerful, powerful, um, tier of government is our lawmakers. They are very powerful. Mm -hmm. They can switch and change anything. Where we are as a country is not just because of our executive. It's because of our lawmakers. Yes. Self-serving. So in three days you can create and push a law <laughs> to serve yourself. But you are not able to, in three days, push a bill Minimum from your wage. state and fight that the federal government mm. creates and gives, gives your state opportunity to mine the resources of your state. Mm -hmm. You can as a lawmaker, you can protest against the federal government for not giving your state capacity. So but we have our lawmakers succeed. very creative. When very creative when it comes to serving themselves right. mm. and using that brain they have to only feed themselves. So I want, I want us to see where we as a nation would hold the lawmakers more accountable for right. everything not working in yeah. our country. But let's take it to it, yes. He, he says, yeah. um, civil servants work 20 to 35 years to quality for gratuity pension. Life pension for 48 years is daylight robbery. You people should extend this debate to governors and their deputies exactly. in most states, yeah. including yeah. Lagos. Yeah. Momentum says Ganduje must have made a lot of promises when he was at the verge of losing the election. election. Watch what had been going on in Keno. <laughs> So I'm not surprised there must be satisfaction for those that played part in this re-election. Mm. Andrew says, come. these politicians keep on chopping Nigerian monies. Mm. If Nigerians allow life pensions for all state house assembly members, then truly you are all mumus for not having a Nigerian J.J. Rawlings me, to get rid of these corrupt people. <laughs> okay. Hello, Larry, go ahead, please. Hey, hi. Right, okay. Um... I think the issue about the uh, um, the, uh, the the pension, it's um, I see it in a different light. In that um, I believe we raised some uh, a debate regards to uh, like for instance, you have a governor who now becomes senator. As a governor, he's got pension right. Mm -hmm. As a senator, there's a pension there waiting for him. So uh -huh. now, as the president and for life benefits. Mm. Now, the issue of pension is a benefit that should generate to, I mean, to all Nigerians. Just like we have roads, that is what government provides. Mm. Pension should be a benefit that government provides for the people. Mm -hmm. Now, although the people will pay a bit to it to increase what they get as a pension, so it should not be 
or somebody because you serve, you make this money, then they now arrange you up cars well mm. every four years. That is not a pension. Okay. That is some kind of what we call uh, benefits that come with your job, like right. uh, like in this country, if you work with a company, right. you, you have all these other benefits, hospital rights, right. you, they allocate you to a hospital that works for the company, and things like that. That is not pension. Right. Okay, point, point taken. Yes. Thank yes. you, um, sir. Right. Sometimes from the outside, you know, looking in, yeah. we see um, uh, Governor Arufai, when it came to deal with um, the teachers, those who were not qualified to be teachers, he sort of took a strong stand, what a lot of other governors have been unable to do. So that's what a lot of people see. This is a man that seems to be doing a lot. And it seems that people who criticize him are just political detractors. And somehow we've heard that we make the issues, we turn the issues into a Christian, Muslim issue when it's just really about making sure that you get development in Kaduna State. Is there a Christian is Muslim that, issue? So is there really a Christian Muslim issue or is it that people will always find a way to divide us along those lines? No, there is no Christian Muslim issue in Kaduna. <clears throat> At least I don't know about that. Uh, I do know for a fact that so, sorry, those the reason who, I say that, just yeah. to quickly add, you know, when you have fights in different places yeah, in Kajuru, yeah, they would yeah. say, oh, it's because the Christians there, that's why they let it pass. Yes. Or Fulanis were killed, but nobody talked about that. But Christians were killed, you know, and we hear about it. Or Christians were allowed to be killed. You know, the purveyors of conflict will always want to find a narrative mm. for it. They will always want to brand it in such a way that will exclude them from liability. Mm -hmm. and, and this is something that happens not just in Kaduna State, but across divides, whether it's right. in Zamfara or in Benue State. Somebody will ignite a situation that puts everybody in trouble. Right. But they are going to find something that seems to legitimize why that conflict uh, has happened. So I, I, I think that the facts are there. Anybody can come to Kaduna and see for right. themselves. Okay. There was 10 billion put into school feeding. What did it bring out? Nothing. And the food right. there that was given was terrible. Mm. The people, the teachers who were sent out were the same teachers who were asked, we could come back and do a receipt. Mm. How, do, how does it work? And there were people who, for everything that is what, could not have filled those exams. Mm. And yet they were Unfortunately, sent we have to run up. Exams. I'm sorry. So, I know you have yeah. a book. You want to tell us about your book? Just tell us about your book. We have to go on that. All right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Echoes of Justice uh, is a collection, is a prose and uh, it's a collection of articles about uh, justice in Nigeria generally. And um, the central we'll thing... On, we'll show it on our, on our Instagram page. It will, you can put it down. Yeah, thank you. The <laughs> central theme, thank you. The central theme about yeah. it is not just to write a book. Right. It's to say that we have to, as Nigerians, take ownership mm. of this country. We have to insist that we must have a nation. Mm. We have to put pressure on our system, especially the judicial system, to make it work. Unfortunately, we are at a very sad uh, history in our judicial space right now. But I think that people should not despair. We should not allow for the politicization of the judiciary. We should put all the effort that is required for us to have a country that right. works. Yeah. All right, so we'll look out for it. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for um, having me. That's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, this issue of Lagos State, no, not Lagos State, local government autonomy. Yeah. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Yeah. Stay tuned, your view will be right back. Welcome back to your view. Thanks for staying with us. So it is no longer news that the federal government controls Almost every facet of our nation's life, state governments re receive what belongs to the local government, and sometimes local governments are left with nothing for developmental projects. However, the federal government has decided to grant financial autonomy to local government councils. What effect would this have on the state government and the likes? Joining us on the show is the former chairman, Ikeja Local Government, Pa Ademola Salami. During his tenure, he was the executive chairman of Ikeja Local Government, and he actually built a lot of landmark projects. Welcome, sir, to, all, to the show this day. You're welcome, Thanks. sir. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. <laughs> Let's celebrate. Sir. Thank you. If you don't know this man, this man was one of the, um, the local government chairman back in the day. And I, I know that um, Mubala Jampa Gandhani was one of the projects that you built during your time. Um, there were quite a lot of um, hospitals that you used the local government fund at the time to mm. build. Could you share with us your experience during that period? Um, 
how your financial autonomy empowered you to do quite a bit of things in Lagos State. Well, thank you very much. Uh, during our own time, we enjoy some sort of uh, autonomy. Okay. And uh, we were able to do what is expected of the local government. That's the government that is the nearer to right. the Before. grassroots. Right. Exactly. But before you talk of uh, you want to do this, you want to do that, then we should first of all look up the uh, IGR, that is internally generated revenue mm. of the local government. Okay. Now, what we are witnessing now, the local government has been turned into glorified arms of the Ministry of Local Government. Mm -hmm. But by then, you see, the local government chairman is, uh, is, in, is in the same level as the governor of the state. Mm -hmm. The local government chairman is the governor of the grassroots. Mm -hmm. So we are people will come, you know, so not everybody will has access to the commissioner or the governor, mm -hmm. but can have access. Because the council, we have wards. Mm -hmm. Each ward had its own councillor. Right. Okay. Now the the people from your ward don't may not necessarily come direct to the chairman. You will come to the councillor. Right. Mm -hmm. This is what we need. Right. Right. The councillor being part of the uh, community government. there. Mm -hmm. So now then they will bring that to. Then when we want to prepare our budget, mm. now during our own time. That's why I say, you see, this style of government, now we have the federal, state, and local government. But it is not an arm of the, uh, uh, arms of the government, because uh, when we talk of three arms of government, mm. that is the executive, legislature, and the judiciary. Mm. But in this one, so we have federal, that is style of government, mm. federal, state, state, and local and government. Yeah. So everybody should. Then, you see, the federation accounts allocation, so it has been before okay. long time, right. so stated in the constitution. Right. But then, the local government, as at that time, were allowed to generate funds, and that is where. So we, in, in Lagos State, you have the history. In fact, the Lagos State happened to be the first state that you know the Naira has value by then. Mm -hmm. So that uh, presented budget of one billion mm. out of the 19 states that we have. Okay, wow. so that our viewers understand um, yeah. the role you played. I'd like you to share some of those landmark projects you yeah. did yeah. during that period, so they understand the as, as the chairman of the local government. Tell us some, share some of those with us. Well, you see, uh, uh, in road infrastructure, right. well, I try as much as possible to do, for, for example, you know, we have the uh, uh, federal, state, and local government yes. rules. Mm -hmm. And the public don't want to know okay. whether this road is federal or federal federal so yes. yeah. So if the road is bad, it's they bad. are looking for somebody who is nearer, right. and that is the local government. Right. So then it, it will not be sensible for the uh, council chairman to say, oh, this road is federal road, is federal road mm. or state road. Right. So, I mean, so the road is bad. Yeah. We want you to fix it. Right. And so then we are allowed to generate revenue. You see, this federal allocation, when it comes, then it comes, then the state allocation too comes too. But the, when we are preparing your budget, now the, we go to the governor's office, that is the state executive. To, so what they want to know is, you want to do this, how do you get that fund? Mm. Now they make us not to rely on the federal and state allocation. allocation. Mm. So you have to generate. Okay. So what are you generating? Mm. So the percentage of gener generation, so they will look it to that of uh, the allocation. federal and the uh, state. state. So Lagos State was then the state that don't even rely on the federal allocation. So, I'd like you to share some of those landmark projects you yeah. did yeah. during that period. So they understand the as, as the chairman of the local government. Tell us some, share some of those with us. Well, you see, uh, uh, in road infrastructure, right. well, I try as much as possible to do, for, for example, you know, we have the uh, federal, state, and local government yes. rules. Mm -hmm. 
and the public don't want to know okay. whether this road is federal, or federal or and so yes. on. Yeah. So if the road is bad, it's they bad. are looking for somebody who is nearer, right. and that is the local government. Right. So then it will not be sensible for the uh, council chairman to say, oh, this road is federal road, is federal road mm. or state road. Right. So I mean, so the road is bad. Yeah. They want you to fix it. Right. And so then we are allowed to generate revenue. You see, this federal allocation, when it comes, then it comes, then the state allocation too comes too. But the, when you are preparing your budget, now the, we go to the governor's office, that is the state executive. To, so what they want to know is, you want to do this, how do you get that fund? Mm. Now they make us not to rely on the federal and state allocation. allocation. Mm. So you have to generate. Okay. So what are you generating? Mm. So the percentage of gener generation, so they will look it to that of uh, the allocation. federal and the uh, state. state. So Lagos State was then the state that don't even rely on the federal allocation. So mm. based on what you just said now, yes. the, gov the chairman in position today yeah. don't necessarily have to rely on this autonomy to be effective. Or do you agree? Like some of the, we, they have excuses now that oh they don't give us money, we don't have money, we don't have money. They, but you're saying that even then you yeah. were you were compelled yeah. to internally generate something to be productive before you can carry out projects. Yes. Do you agree that this state, this um, current chairman we have could on their own without um, money from federal or states carry out projects based on internally generated revenue? They they can't do it now. You see, the source of revenue. You see, it's not the council chairman that we go to his house or somebody. So now, for, for instance, telement rates are being collected mm. by the local government. Mm. Oh, before. Yes, before. This is where, for an example, the first budget that I did when I became the chairman, so when I, the, the officials, that is the secretary and the uh, head of the department, so they will prepare it for us. Mm. Then the first budget I prepared then, so I look at it. Now, it was a Kenya local government that is the first local government to be called to defend your budget. Okay. When the governor went through mm. the generations, mm. so then the generation, the official gave it at 300,000. Mm. That is per annum. Mm. So when the governor said, look, he called my name, First name, how are you doing? What is all this? In Ikeja, if you tax all those dwelling houses in Ikeja, what one thousand? You will get millions. Not if you are talking of then after talking of how much more talking of industrial. Mm -hmm. And commercial concerns. So that's part of the, yes. part of the revenue yes. that the state is depending on. Now, because that's what you say that is different so, now. So that, that's why I say so that's okay. the difference now. Mm. Okay, let me get you down again. So, so by uh, law, so that we we so we generate those revenues then. from those, so that in fact it is even higher than mm. what, what the allocation, allocation, from the allocation okay, okay. Well. aside right. from that uh, tenement rate, what other ways were you generating? Um, uh, revenue. Revenue, revenue in the local governments and how and how was the money sent to you because now they have a joint account between the states did you have a joint account with the states no. that time no okay how was the money we, sent we are, yes so that if the, at the end of <laughs> you see that's another thing our own and when they talk of uh, uh, corruption this uh, so the system we are using then didn't allow for any corruption. Okay. Now, you see, you, we are using, okay, you get allocation from January. Mm. Then the next allocation will be in April. Okay. So okay. if you are giving, say, two million, even you collected uh, your internal generated revenue, two million, okay. you get uh, one million from the state, all sort of, and so by the time you are going to defend your budget, so they will look at it, then you have to specify what, you what and what you want to do. Construction of this road, construction of culvert, market, health center, all this and that. Okay, okay fine. Now, at the end of the, uh, the, the quarter, that is around March, yeah. you have to account for all so those things that, that you said you wanted to do, right. that you have done it. 
what you are telling us, because Lagos State, for example, boasts of, I think last time I checked was 30 billion, I think it's more than that now, but 30 billion monthly. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you say, yeah. during your period, yeah. you, as a state, you can't really boast of that because that generation is com was coming from the local, e local government. governments. Yes. So you're the ones really generating this amount of money. Yes. So mm -hmm. you can then use it effectively. Exactly. But the question now, sir, yeah. Yeah. the local government that we have, chairman that we have today, yeah. Do they have the capacity, to knowledgeably or um, ab the ability? Because I feel that many of them are just rubber stamp, elector, maybe uh, somebody's brother, somebody's uncle, mm. you know, those uh, babasale, young boys. No, they just Politics. come, <laughs> they just come <laughs> in and become local government. Chair. A lot of times. So I'm saying that do these current local government chairs across board, not just in Lagos, across board, do they have the ability and capacity to, to hold and to judiciously use this kind of budget? of X amount of billions every single month for the local governments? Well, you see, if you are allowed, you see the system, you, you know, is different. Now, we are allowed to generate for, by ourselves. Mm. For instance, in Nikeja, for an example, which happened to be the chairman then. So we collect the revenue from the industries, commercial concerns, I didn't understand. So, yes, sir, yes, exactly. Have mm. you been engaged? Have you engaged with any of the current local government chairmen? Well, have you spoken mm -hmm. to them? Do you know any of the current ones? I you? know because uh, I'm still here part and parcel yeah. or do yeah. elders. Okay. okay. Yeah. Do you, do you <laughs> so, trust yeah, their, because right now they are going to be getting capacity to handle funds and the mm. governors have always said that they don't, tr these people, there's corruption, that's why they've stopped, they've, they've been withholding the money. So do you believe that with the crop of local government chairmen we have now, you, we, they can be entrusted with the capacity to withdraw 500,000 naira every day Indeed. and they wouldn't still go corrupt <laughs> with those you've, at least the few you know. Well, I trust uh, uh, in Lagos State, mm. if you allow uh, them to generate, so they will do better. Mm. Okay, well, something, yes. something happened, yes. something, mm. something happened on the road to... You see, there's mm. one thing yes. which happened during our own time. Yeah. Now it's quarterly. Mm. Now it's monthly. Okay. okay. So you think we should do quarterly? Now you see what well, whichever way you put it. Now you, you prepare your budget so that by by the end of March yeah. or so, this is what you want to do. Right. So okay, this is you what see. you want to generate. Yes. Mm. You so are I need, I need you to this. tell us what went wrong. Mm. Because from yes. your system, yes. how the kind of control you had, you had. Yes. between then and, and now. now, what went wrong? What happened? What how the corruption creep in such that today? The states are the one mopping up these funds from the various um, local governments. It's accountability. Mm. Now, if we, during our own time, if you prepare budget, yeah. this is what I want to do. I want to consult 10 rules. Yes. So we spread it to all the wards. Right. That's the components right. that make up the local government, when 10 or 20 right. or sort of. Now, how do you want to generate? Then internally generated revenue. Right. They allow us to generate. Okay. That is all the industries. Right. So on. Right. Then the, the uh, state government allocation and federal allocation mm. will come. Okay. All so, right. Let me take this yes. call from Yula. Thanks for calling. Are you there? Yeah, my name, Good morning. Morning. Go ahead, please. Um, my, um, if you allow local government system to function in Nigeria, definitely you are eliminating underdevelopment and tackling security issues. Local governments are the most closest government to Nigerian people. Allow them to function, you allow Nigeria to function. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, I sir, um, I, I like the way you talk and you say we generate. I, I could yes. sense the pride yes, exactly. that you were elected or yes. you were put there and yeah. you did your work the way you were supposed to. Yes, exactly. So, um, how do we have um, maybe like sensitization or talks with the local government chairman, you are an elder now, talk yeah. to them on how they can take that power and do what they are supposed to do. Right. And how was it able, because at the time that you people were generating, the uh, state government did not tamper with your allocations. No. They gave you what was due to yeah, you, right? Exactly. Good. But now we have the, uh, there are insinuations that they tamper with the local government and just give them small, small things to do whatever they want to do and share, basically, and not do the real work. So how do you get the states now to give out what they are supposed to give and encourage your counterparts, the younger ones, to generate revenue? Well, I think uh, that is what they want to do now mm. about uh, this uh, 
local mm -hmm. government uh, autonomy okay. to generate revenue. Uh, and I want to assure you, well, I want to say much about Lagos State. Mm. Now, you see, uh, the current crop of chairmen that we have, if you give them the fund, well, I think uh, they will do better. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> as a former um, government <laughs> official, yes. are you getting any pensions? <laughs> no. No life pensions for you? No, no, no life pension. To be funny by yourself? For you. No, at all. <laughs> you no see? life pension? No life pension, no. And you worked though. So you worked, work, so. we, we work. <laughs> okay. Mm. You see, and then we feel that uh, the same thing that happens to the civil servant should happen to the, because this another way that we curb corruption. Mm. That is okay if I leave office. What do I depend mm -hmm. upon? Mm -hmm. And in Nigeria, if you are head of any government, whether local, state, or federal, so then you come out, people will not help you because they will believe that, that you, you must have, have yeah. mm -hmm. make the money. The money. Mm -hmm. And during our own time, there was no time for that. Mm -hmm. They want to see what you have done. Mm -hmm. So, you see, in Lagos State, we, don't, we have federal, state, and local government. In my own local government in the Kenya, I was constructing the road of the, 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 the state yes. government. Mm -hmm. You know, our bad family, our law, we, yeah. you know, so, so that there's one woman, one day, her car just stopped on the flood of water. Yeah. So they said, okay, okay, now. Where do I go? They said, oh, that's the local government. So, <laughs> the one woman just came in. I said, okay, sit down, sit down. Oh, no, no, I'm not sitting down. Come and see, come and see. I thought the, 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 the cars stopped and he, she wants people to push it outside. He said, because uh, you are not doing your job. Right. Look at this road. Right. Well, no. Now, he, she, will not, she, yeah. want, she you know, wanted to listen to yeah. Whether the, that road is belongs state, to yeah. the state or okay. local government, you are there. You so, don't care. That then I have to write a letter to the, to 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 the commissioner that. for uh, what's then that yeah. I want to do this road. Mm. Mm. I, uh, then I copy the governor. So don't make it like. So the, 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 the commissioner at the end. No, the, the, no, the, no, the commissioner, the commissioner reply me that yeah. that is state road. Okay. So of, of it, we have to The commissioner too copy the governor. The governor said this man said. He has the money. Let him do it. Hey, I'll do it. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Fantastic. Unfortunately, uh -huh. that's all we can say. Thank, thank you so much, thank you very It's a pleasure much. having you. Uh, God bless okay, you. Okay, so for those of you who are still wondering how this money will be spent, we're still going to bring in somebody to help us understand this local government autonomy, what it means for you and I. Stay with us. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.